and welcome to another edition of David Bryant Reports. I am David Bryant. Today I want to talk to you about an execution that took place not long ago in an Oklahoma state prison. You know, for many years I've worked inside one of the most well-known maximum security prisons in the United States. And I've had the privilege of watching inside those walls a movement that I would say is nothing less than a Christ awakening movement. There are times I've been there where 200 inmates will be gathered in a time of worship in the little chapel in the center of the prison. And uh, like I say, it, it will go on for an hour and you can't stop them. And I thought about my experiences over the years working with a, a mighty work of the Spirit of God inside that particular prison. And I thought about the experience that took place for a fellow named Philip Hancock uh, and also his chaplain, uh, Devin Moss. The interesting thing about these two people is that Philip, who was facing execution, was an avowed atheist, and his chaplain, Devin Moss, was also an avowed atheist, and they were approaching the moment of death together as atheists and trying to find comfort. Now, they, they were also trying to find uh, clemency. They, uh, you know, Philip said, I don't, I don't want to die. I, I want to live. But the fact of the matter is, he said, you know, my non-existence didn't bother me before I was born, and my non-existence isn't going to bother me after I'm dead. But the closer they got to that day, the more serious it became. And on the day of the execution, uh, Devin Moss said he got up and ironed his white shirt and white pants before he went to the prison uh, to be with Philip one last time. Why? Because, he said, I wanted to look spiritual. Isn't that interesting? And moments before Philip was taken into the execution chamber, Devin said, I want to pray for you. Now, I want to read you his prayer because it wasn't really straight to God. It doesn't acknowledge God, but listen to the prayer because you get a sense of what was in his heart, his desire, and his desire for Philip as well. He said, we call the spirit, he wrote it down, I'm reading it to you. He said, we call the, the spirit of humanity into this place. Let love fill our hearts. We ask that in this transition into peaceful oblivion uh, with Phil, that he would feel love, and although he is on a journey that he's never gone before, that he would not feel alone. We invoke the power of peace, of strength, of grace, and of surrender. And uh, Devin Moss said that after the execution, as he was going to his car out in the prison parking lot, he found himself praying again, Oh, may dear Philip find a better life on the other side than he had here almost admitting there might be something on the other side of the grave. Now, when I put on my King Jesus glasses and I look at a, at a historical event like that that happened just a, just a short time ago, you know, I, I think, oh, if only they had experienced what I've seen so many experiencing inside the prison where I worked. You know, if only Philip could have gone into that chamber knowing, like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, that death has no sting, grave has no victory, because God has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That he could have gone into that situation, and that Devin could have helped him go into that situation with the same perspective as Paul has, as he looks at King Jesus in 1 Thessalonians 4 and says, we may grieve, with the issue of death, but we never grieve as those who have no hope because we know that there's coming a time very soon when Christ will descend out of heaven and we will be gathered up to him, resurrected with bodies like his glorious body. You know, Devin, uh, I wish he could have been able to tell Philip how even now, even before he, he goes into the experience of death, he could experience resurrection life at this very moment. Like Paul says in Romans chapter 6, he says, when you come to Christ, you end up dying. You end up being buried. And you end up being raised from the dead. That's what salvation means. That's actually what happens in our relationship with the living God. And we can begin, Paul says, then to walk in newness of resurrection life. Now they said, well, a, a relationship, bonding ourselves together in a relationship, that's what will give Philip the strength to get through this experience. And of course, when I put on my King Jesus glasses, I think, oh, he could have had a relationship with the King of Heaven <laughs> as he approached that, that difficult moment. 
like Paul says in Colossians chapter 3, set your heart, your mind on the things above where Christ is reigning at the right hand of God. For you are dead and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That isn't the future. That's the present. That's the relationship that Philip could have had. You know, you know the whole, the whole issue about um, uh, having a better life on the other side you know, the whole truth of living under the kingship of Jesus is that we begin to experience even now what I call approximations of the consummation. <laughs> uh, as Paul says in Hebrews 6, we taste of the powers of the age to come by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Paul says God has set us free from the law of sin and death through the law of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Well, that's what I could have wanted for dear Philip. I think about the time, one time when I was preaching in the prison where I worked and the um, and we'd had a, an hour of worship and praise. It was really glorious, so much so that we sensed the presence of the King of glory in our midst. And it was so clear and so obvious and, and so weighty that when I, it was my turn to get up and bring the message, I couldn't hardly move. I could hardly speak. There were tears in my eyes. We were on holy ground. That could have happened for Philip. That could happen for any one of us. God wants to do for all of us what he's been doing for those men in our state prison, that he would do the same in your life and mine. He wants to do a work that gives us the profound sense that we are living in union with and in the presence of the King of glory and that we live and move and have our being in Him alone. Well, that's my report for now. Please join me next time as we continue to look at the world around us through the spectacular saving supremacy of Jesus Christ. I'll see you soon.